Okay. So this is uh, EE thirty nine twenty one, week one, lecture three. So today we're going to review combinational logic plus start sequential logic. So just an announcement that I'm not going to flip the classroom uh, in 3921 because my server, like I said, is down. So it's not practical for you to be able to watch the videos. No flipped classroom. Um, but I will record videos and post them on my YouTube channel. And post them on my YouTube channel. So I already sent you an email with the link to my YouTube channel. It's uh, www.youtube.com slash user slash Bharat, B-H-A-R-A-T-H, Berkeley, B-E-R-K-E-L-E-Y. -E -E so youtube.com slash user slash Bharat Berkeley. And I'll also email you a PDF of these slides. Uh, but anyway, that's about it for announcements. So let's get started. So first of all, what is a combinational logic circuit? So combinational logic circuit is where uh, outputs depend only on current inputs and not on the past inputs. So basically, in 2900, uh, what you must have learned, or 2900 is equivalent, is number one, Boolean algebra. Okay. Number two is you might have learned about K maps or Carnot maps, and this is where uh, there's a classic example of how digital systems curriculum has changed in the 21st century as opposed to the 20th century. In the sense, nowadays on K maps, uh, I only spend like uh, one or at most two lectures on this because the idea behind teaching you K maps is so you understand Boolean algebra, which is a must for digital uh, logic. But as far as minimization done by the synthesizer, it does not really plot a K-map. Okay. Uh, however, let's just do a simple example. So this, again, this is just a review. So let's say you have a, so an example. Suppose you want to uh, design a circuit to count the number of ones in a three-bit input. So what you could do is using uh, what is called a uh, so solution. This is structural logic. So basically, you have three inputs, I2, I1, I0. You have two outputs, F1, F0. So basically, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1. So the number of ones here is 0. Here it's 1, 1, 2, 1, 2, 2 and then three. So in order to get the minimal logic, we just simply plot a K-map. So I1, I0, so 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 0, the K-map numbering 0, 1. So in this case, we'll go, let's see, I'm looking at F1, so of course save this. So I go 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1. So we look at sum of products and look at the cover. Recall that a K-map is just a visual way of spotting the consensus theorem or applying the consensus theorem. So consensus theorem, ah, consensus theorem, sorry. So F1 would be looking at this cover, this one, and then this one would be I1 and I0, again, sum of products. You could do a product of sum if you want to practice, or I2, I1, or, um, Let's see, I2, I0, okay? Similarly, you can do one for F0. So here is F0. I2, I1, I0, so 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, Zero one one zero. Ah, that's why I screwed up. Let's do this again. Uh, 
0, 0, 1, 1, 0, okay, 1, 0, that's what I thought, 0, 1, and basically, this is the classic exclusive war, because exclusive war is 1, if an odd number of input, an odd, if there are an odd number of 1s in the input, that's true here, so if 0 is a 1, that's true here, it's a 1, not true here, you have two ones, even number 0, odd, 1, odd, one, sorry, even 0, even 0, odd 1, okay? So now you can do a logic generalization of this, but like I said, this kind of technique uh, for designing digital circuits was out, kind of like uh, outdated in the late 20th century. So in the 21st century, we use VHDL, for example, as a hardware description language. However, this is still vital, so you understand what's going on at the structural level. And for combinational logic, it's pretty easy as opposed to sequential logic. So behavioral, so this is one solution. Second solution is behavioral. VHDL could simply be with, for example, inputs. Let's say inputs a standard logic vector, and so is outputs. Outputs uh, with select uh, number of ones, let's say, is 0, 0, when 0, 0, 0, comma, 0, 1, when 0, 0, 1, comma, uh, let's see, 0, 1, and you get the idea when 0, 1, 0, dot, 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 so, 1, 1, when others, so when the others case is the 1, 1, 1 case, but the bottom line is, the synthesizer will do the minimization, etc. that's necessary, so you can specify this behaviorally. This is one big thing on 2900, like one idea behind, the big idea behind 2900 is Boolean algebra. And we also talked about combinational logic building box. Building blocks. Such as uh, Muxus, multiplexer, decoders, uh, what else, adders, etc. And then the main thing we did in 2020 is understand FPGA design flow. Okay, But 2900 is pretty straightforward. Now, as far as sequential logic is concerned, just grabbing some water here. So sequential logic, which is 2902 or equivalent, so sequential logic is when the output depends, outputs, depend on the current and past inputs. So basically, in 2902, what we covered were finite state machines, which are a way of specifying sequential logic circuits. There are two kinds, Moore and Mealy. We also looked at uh, building blocks for sequential logic, which are counters, shift registers, etc. Okay. And finally, we emphasize the concept of what is called control plus data path or like it's known in Chu's book as FSMD, so finite state machine is the control, and data path involves any sequential or combinational, sequential and or combinational logic building block that helps the control. Uh, a classic example is a processor. For example, if you look at the ARM processor architecture, the finite state machine or the control can be uh, understood as a fetch, decode, execute cycle. So the data path, for example, for the fetch, where the processor has to fetch instruction from memory. So there is 
probably an address decoder in the data path. Now, there's definitely an address decoder in the data path. And for decoding the instruction and executing it, let's say you have to go, if it's an add instruction, then you need an ALU, etc. So at the big picture, sequential, I mean, digital systems are designed as FSMD systems. Okay. Now, before we look at an example of finite state machines, that's what we will do in today's lecture. We'll actually use uh, Quartus to look at it. I'm going to type it up in Quartus. Note that I use state transition diagrams to specify FSMs. Okay, you could use other techniques or specification techniques such as algorithmic state machine charts, ASM charts, etc. But to be honest, the most difficult part about sequential logic design is getting the finite state machine. Given the problem, as we will see in Monday's lecture, the thinking, the brain is actually, using the brain involved, is involved in where you get the finite state machine or the ASM chart. Uh, just because you have an ASM chart specification does not mean it's any easier to implement than the, any easier to implement than the state transition diagram. So either state transition diagram or ASM charts, getting it from the problem statement, designing it is where the brains are. And I use state transition diagrams because they're uh, looking at them, they're pretty much more intuitive than ASM charts. It's not that I'm biased against ASM charts, I'm just going to do state transition diagrams. You're welcome to do ASM charts if you want. All right, so let's uh, look at the generic finite state machine. Uh, and it's highly recommended that you follow and you, that you understand this picture and the subsequent VHDL hardware so you avoid synthesizing latches. I'll put that in red. Note that we should never synthesize latches as they are not clocked. They are non-clocked memory elements and hence lead to asynchronous logic and asynchronous logic is bad because uh, state changes do not take place on a clock edge thereby leading to potential uh, oscillatory or unstable behavior so bottom line is never synthesize latches so pay attention to the warnings that Cordis gives but here is the here's a picture of a generic fsm and this you shouldn't have to memorize this you should understand this keep it in mind and understand the subsequent vhdl let's look at it there are primarily three blocks okay here is what is called next state logic here is state memory and well here is output logic So obviously the most important input signal coming in is the clock and the clock basically goes directly into the state memory or register if you will so assume it's positive it's triggered and then of course there is reset very important also and that goes in here so here is reset finally if you will. As far as inputs are concerned, you can have M inputs. Let me save this. So sometimes, like I said um, in the last lecture, my journal writer crashes because it just cannot save enough data. Uh, okay, apparently it did, which is good. So here you have, here we have um, M. Ah. inputs okay 
looks like it's gonna crash so let me just save this and restart it before it crashes because it should die so it's uh, the number of inputs we can have is well M can be anywhere from 1 to like n or one any number of inputs Right, so here is M inputs. So the next state law, so basically your state memory is given by D flip flops. But again, it's crashing. Hopefully, that doesn't mean my computer is going down. So there's D flip flops. So what you get here. For the next states is n oops next state obviously the number of states n does not have to be equal to the number of inputs now once this is um, let me make this a little bigger because as you will see I am gonna feedback. So in other words, this is, this is obviously the output of the D flip flops. The number of outputs is obviously equal to n. You have n flip flops corresponding to the n states, but basically this is your current state. So current state gets fed back, and let me move this also. But anyway, so current state gets fed back to the next state logic. In other words, you determine the next state as a function of where you are, the current state, and the input, of course. So this is N, so let's call this F. And some, for some reason, people get confused between this current state and this next state, but this makes perfect sense. The next state is a function of where you are, current state, and the input, inputs. You will now here is the difference between more and mealy for a more machine the output logic g let's call it that output logic is a function of the current state alone okay and then let's say you have outputs p so you don't have obviously the number of outputs do not be equal to the number of states do not be equal to the number of inputs but basically this is a more machine so a mealy machine the output is not only a function of the current state but it's also a function of the input so this is a mealy machine so here is m now, given this picture, please pay attention to now how I synthesize, how I specify a simple FSM in VHDL. Note that, well, mine's still saving. Hopefully, it doesn't crash. Note that uh, the main idea behind the Synthesis or the behind the specification of FSM is that you must make sure that your state memory exactly synthesizes to this. You should not, I repeat, not have redundant logic in state memory. As a, I'll show you how to specify state memory, and that's pretty. Much, that's what you should follow. Point number one. Point number two is a general note on debugging, in the sense the way I specify and FSM, it makes the synthesizer infer a state machine. So you can actually see a state machine in the form of a state transition diagram. However, the point I'm trying to make is that, um, uh, hold on, I'm going to take a break because it's pretty noisy outside. I guess class just left, but and then I'll be back shortly. All right, so continuing. What I was trying to make, what I was trying to say before break is, as you will see, the way I specify the 
FSM in behavioral VHDL allows the synthesizer to actually infer a straight transition diagram. The point I was trying to make is, unlike combinational logic, it is very difficult to get sequent, if not impossible, to obtain a functional sequential logic specification without doing either simulation using model sim or in-system debugging using signal tap. Now, the reason why I choose to do model sim is because it is uh, the most, not only the most powerful simulator around, but it is also the industry standard simulator. It might seem difficult to use for people who don't know how to use it, but that's true of any tool. So I highly encourage you to do simulation in models and when appropriate. For example, let's say you're interfacing the audio codec on the DE1, models and does not have a simulation model of your Wolfson codec. In that case, signal tap, which we will talk about later in the course, is obviously appropriate. But saying that signal tap is better than model sim or even model sim is better than signal tap is kind of idiotic, point number one. Point number two, you really don't want to use model sim to simulate combinational logic uh, because it's, heck, you don't even want to use signal tap on combinational logic because it's combinational logic. It's not that difficult to realize or specify in VHDL. Anyway, having said all that, so let's now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, quit uh, notepad and we're going to do a some actually before I quit notepad let's look at what we're going to design so basically I'm just going to specify so we're going to specify the following FSM in VHDL it's a very simple FSM just to illustrate the ideas uh, so there's going to be an initial state there should always be a well-defined initial state in it so this little thick arrow means this is the initial state and let's make it a more machine. So the output here is zero. And if it's zero, zero, the input, uh, then we stay in the same state. If not, if it's zero, one, one, zero, or one, one, we go to a different state as zero. And let's make this in our output one. And then we immediately, we don't care about what the input is. We immediately jump, jump to S1 and we stay there. Let's make the output here zero, and we just stay here. So it's just something, some state machine to make a point about how to specify state machines in VHDL. So in order to specify state machines in VHDL, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a simple quarters project. So at the top level, my inputs are going to be, aha, this is what I was afraid of, but the good news is I've already, aha, I've finished most of what I wanted to do. So let me cancel this and it's restarting so anyway we don't need journal so let's see if so that state machine is disappeared that's okay so hopefully it's in your uh, mind so what i'll do is i'll now specify the vhdl uh, uh, specify the fsm in vhdl and go from there so first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a new project so let's go into Windows Explorer. Like I said, you should you want to create a project without uh, you want to you want to have a folder with no spaces in it. So let's make a new folder, and I'm going to call this uh, obviously simple FSM. Okay, so here it is. Let's start. So here's Cordis. Fire that up and. The state machine basically is going to have inputs, two inputs and one output. So the output is simply going to be an LED. The two inputs are going to be the two uh, switches, SW0, SW1. The clock is going to be the 50 megahertz clock. The key zero, key zero is going to be reset. The point again is to emphasize how to specify a finite state machine in VHDL. It boots up, quarters that is. All right, so let's start. So, file, uh, new project wizard. Next, so let's go to my directory. So, c colon simple fsm. So, select simple fsm. What is the name of the project? Same as the name of the folder, simple fsm. Um, blah. I'm not going to add any files per se. Device is a cyclone 2. 
EP2C20F484C7. Uh, let's see, EP2C20F484C7. EP2C20F484C7 on the DE1. Uh, you can leave this as standard finish. And then as I told you, the next thing I do is I import pin assignments. And actually, as I do this, I'll also show you how to make a modular design. That is, my top level is going to instantiate my finite state machine. So I'm going to do a top-down design. Where's D1? There it is. Uh, lab exercises. Okay. So here we go. PHDL file. So top level for... Uh, FSM design on uh, this, this this project simply illustrates how to illustrate again spell how to specify an FSM in VHDL again if you forget which you shouldn't you can right click go to insert template VHDL uh, full designs state machines for example here's a four state more machine boom okay so there's another way to do this or there's a milling machine safe safe state machine etc But I recommend you remember the picture. The most important thing in this document is the picture has been saved. But I recommend you just not memorize, not blindly memorize, but understand and just remember this picture. Okay, let's continue. Uh, let's see. Library IEEE, use IEEE.standard. Now again, another thing is, the reason why I'm just typing this off the top of my head is because I've been doing this for some time. Uh, this will definitely not work. This just typing off the top of your head will not work for your labs, projects, etc. So you should design on a piece of paper, uh, resolve any uh, discrepancies or questions you have offline, and then start the design. Point number one. Point number two, you're not programming. You're specifying hardware. So, uh, the, so as a general rule of thumb, if we as a human can't understand what's going on by looking at the hardware spec, if it's convoluted, that probably means the synthesizer cannot understand it as well. Right. So make sure the hardware works, keep it as simple as possible. And of course, don't optimize something that doesn't work. That just doesn't make any sense. Right. So anyway, entity simple FSM is port. So like I said, I wanna first have a clock coming in in standard logic. Uh, SW is in standard logic vector nine down to zero now something about the clock I'll put a note here note that global clocks must be buffered by our face lock loops we'll do we'll figure out how to do this later we won't do it in this lab i mean sorry i'm in this lab in this video then key is input standard logic vector i'll just put that comment down there about pll's as a note to you okay then just some ledg out standard logic vector uh, 7 down to 0 and simple FSM periodically save and please be mindful of where it's saving simple FSM and it's added to the project but I always right click and say set a stop level entity just to be safe now architecture top level of simple FSM is begin and top level so what I'm going to define here is I'm going to define a component component uh, three state FSM again my names are not very descriptive but because it's just a demo it's just a demonstration actually this is in component but make sure that you provide as much as descriptive names as possible so that it's clock is the input reset is another input this is in standard logic and then you have inputs as in standard logic vector one down to zero, two inputs, and then one output. And we just close this here, put a semicolon. All right, so uh, three state FSM instance is three state FSM port map. So this is the way I instantiate uh, modules. Okay, it's not the only way clock 
is clock underscore 50 reset is key zero note that I just realized key zero is active low so signal reset what we're gonna do is active low keys are active low so I'm just gonna nod it so when I press it I get a one so it resets so reset is not of key zero okay so we reset and then inputs is SW1 down to zero outputs is LEDG of zero hopefully I don't have any syntax errors but let's first create the subcomponent uh, file new and this is bottom-up design you could create the subcomponent first and then create the top level it's up to you right? just be systematic about it actually I don't need to copy that I need to copy this so again let me do a library IEEE use IEEE standard logic 1164.all I don't think you really need the numeric underscore standard library but I just leave it in there uh, let's see this is entity and entity okay so architecture this is a more FS can spell more FSM of three state FSM is begin and more FSM so right now my output is nothing but just that I'm gonna get a lot of warnings but the sense I'm just testing if my system is I mean if my modularity is working so let's do a quick analysis synthesis control K is the shortcut now if there are no errors what I should see in the RTL viewer is basically just my output being grounded the LDG zero so um, while it's compiling again on my tablet it's a little slow here it is let's see if I have any errors uh, 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 oh I didn't know I had four hyper threaded processors okay I do have an error so okay another thing about errors right uh, people ask me what's going on when they were they see an error students do this uh, just read the goddamn thing right it says line 28 simple FSM near text semicolon expecting something well just double click on it it will take you uh, let's see exactly to where the error is and here's the error I should not put a semicolon here it should be a comma that's exactly what it's saying it's, it's expecting a parenthesis close parenthesis or a comma oh, control K so fix, let's fix one error at a time and then re analyze and synthesize okay formal outputs does not exist probably have some screwed up port mapping uh, output so it's singular so let me just make it singular yeah there oh, oops okay control s let's try this again control k the point of me making these errors i'm not making these errors on purpose but it's good i'm making these errors so you understand like how i'm going about fixing it well how am i going about fixing it i'm just doing rt f m read the bleep message right let's see what it says all right, that looks good, uh, but as you will see, if you go into the RTL viewer, there's uh, nothing going on. There should be nothing going on. So yeah, like oh, I'll put it says it's already grounded here, so you can go and double click and yeah, I'll put zero. Of course, nothing. Okay, now let's go and start specifying the FSM. So there are basically three blocks. Okay, one is state memory. The other is next state logic. The third is output logic. Note that output logic could be actually must be placed in next state logic if you have if we have a mealy FSM because by definition for a mealy FSM the output is a function of both the current state and the input. But anyway, let's just be doing a more right now. And so the state memory is let's label the process state memory process clock reset okay begin in process if reset is one then we want to make our current state as in it wait a minute what about this in it and what about this current state I've not defined it you're right I've not defined it so let's get into let's define it so you say you use type 
state is so in it s0 s1 signal state is of type current state next state so this allows our synthesizer to infer a state machine basically you're doing a type def if you are familiar with c now that's done if reset equals one then current state is in it else in diff if rising edge that's what i use of clock then you could also use clock event and clock equals one if you want and if current state is next state that's it in the sense this is how this exactly infers let me open this up again this block okay as you notice we have a reset we have a clock and basically it's a default flop please do not put anything else in here okay it's not necessary and most likely you will synthesize latches all right how is the next state logic so this is you could label this process as well it's labeled next state logic is process it's a function of the current state and inputs okay so begin end process okay so what we'll do here is we'll use case statements so case current state is okay so when in it do something when s0 do something when others this could be s1 because we have only one more state and the synthesizer will not complain but i like using others just to be clear end case okay so when in it now recall our state machine i said if uh, input is 0 0 okay then current state you stay in it yes else and i screwed this up this doesn't make any sense our next state is in it else next state is a 0 and if if well here you just go to S1, okay? And then here, we just stay in S1, okay? Notice again, the correspondence between this process and this picture, okay? Now, a couple of points. These two processes are executing simultaneously. You're not programming. Well, think about what hardware is design will infer to by the synthesizer and it's obvious should be obvious to you as a human or to us as a human that these two come out okay so the synthesizer will also like it in the sense of inferring logic remember if we as a human cannot understand what's going on the synthesizer probably cannot as well that's point number one point number two i want to make is only this process is synchronous because it's there's a rising edge this is asynchronous because yeah, you could say hey Bart wait a minute uh, the process a process triggers whenever the signals in the sensitivity list right here change you could be like but current state is synchronous yes you're right current state is synchronous however inputs are not synchronous so this process is actually asynchronous that's fine our only synchronous transition here is the current state and that's what we want that's the definition of finite state machine okay, output logic i'm just going to use a selected signal assignment again you can put this in here and for a mealy machine you have to because the outputs are a function of not only the current state but also the inputs however here i'll put it outside the next state logic note that output logic um well yeah i'll leave it as must be you can like make another process for the output logic if you want for a mealy machine to correspond to this but I'll leave it up to you. Okay. With, uh, let's see, current state, you want to make it current state, not next state, because the output is, is obviously a function of the current state. Select output is, I believe it was one only when it's S0, and everywhere else it's zero. Okay? So now we're done. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to simply synthesize this and stop. I'm not going to place and route it on the board. 
because it's not the, again the point of this um, uh, little exercise. Okay, so there's a syntax error, so let's see what that is. Uh, let's see, signal state is, oh, wait a minute, what the heck am I typing? Current state, next state, is of type state, there. I said signal state is of type current state, next state, that doesn't make any sense. On the fact that I have four hyper-threaded processors, <laughs> my tablet's pretty slow. All right. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm again going to look at the RTL view, but notice you have a state machine viewer here. So in this case, you can just go into the state machine viewer and see our state machine directly because we have only one state machine. But let's just look into the RTL viewer because I want to show you some of the highlights of the RTL viewer. So if you go in here, notice how this is in yellow. The previous one, so if you go back up one level, here is in green. So the fact that it's in yellow means it's a finite state machine. So if you go in here, so there it is. Okay. So basically, so we go to S0. Okay. If from in it we go to S. <laughs> so let's see. Maybe I specified it. So if yeah we go to S0, when we go to S when we are in if inputs equal zero zero then next state is in it, else we go to S0, when S0 we go to S1. Uh, uh, but then I don't understand why from in it we are going to S1. Interesting. So so what's happening? is let's try this let's be more specific when we are in s1 we're going to stay in s1 because i want the state machine viewer to reflect what i drew so let's see and it's good that this okay this is how you should examine your design okay in the sense because uh, this is a behavioral description of your design you must you don't want to let the you want to make sure that the synthesizer doesn't automatically infer something that you don't want okay so let me be even more specific i'm thinking that because i specified others it's getting confused let's see if that's the case No, from init, I go to, I stay in init if it is 0, 0. I go to S0. Let's see, next state, next state. If inputs is 0, 0, then... Mm -mm -mm. I go to, I stay, if inputs is 0, 0. I stay in it, else I go to S0. When I'm in S0, I go to S1. When I'm in S1, I stay in S1. And that's it. So uh, this is the output is a 1 when I'm in S1. I mean, when I'm in S0, and that's actually what this little circle means. Okay, output is a 1 there. Output here is a 0, output here is a 0. That's right. But what I don't understand is why do I go from in it to S1? What Okay, so I'm not going to discuss this state transition diagram further in the sense this state transition diagram might be functionally equivalent to the state machine that we um, have. Okay, so what I am, so I'm going to actually, let's see. All right, so we're almost running, we're running out of time. So I'm going to leave it at that. The point is this, okay? Your finite state machine description in VHDL should mirror this. Okay, point number one. Point number two. 
only the state memory process is synchronous. Okay. Point number three, as I was doing, you should always look at the RTL viewer and make sure that you are A, you get a finite state machine diagram and B, the finite state machine you get is functionally equivalent to what you want. So what we will do is next time, we will start off from here. So what I'm going to do actually now is I'm going to take a screenshot. So let's do this. This is actually pretty good. So, oops, that didn't work. So, uh, let me take a screenshot. Let's see. Copy image, full image. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Pasting this works. Okay, beautiful. It works. So, this is the FSM we got. better. So let me copy this again since I have some time. Copy image, full image. So let me go into paint and just paste only the necessary FSM portions. Okay, there it is. All right, let me just select this because that's all I need. So this is what we got from Cordis Synthesizer. This is what it inferred. Okay, but what we drew was what we wanted. This is what we got. What we wanted was this. So we had in it. Okay, so if it's zero zero, we stayed in this state. The output was a zero. If not. 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, we went to S0. The output was a 1 here. From here, we didn't care what the input was. We went to S1. Okay? And then, we stayed there. Okay? So just drawing this out, Okay, this is very interesting. I think I figured out why Quartus did what it did do. That is, again, it's not working. So anyway, uh, let's just... Uh, uh, so, next time what I'll do is I'll start with this. Okay, so it's going to restart shortly. But basically... So yeah, I don't know why Windows Journal is like just dying every time. But I'll, uh, anyway, next time I'll start with the differences between, as to why the two finite state machines are different. Basically what Cordis is doing is it's figuring out that you don't need the S0 state. Because once you're in S0, you immediately jump to S1. So it's basically saying that you don't need S0. However, in our design, S0 is the only state where our output is a 1. So again, it depends on, well, uh, so in this case, the synthesizer is thinking too much in many ways and just uh, inferring a different state machine than the one we specified. So again, next lecture, I'll start out with, uh, so next time, let me just write this out, and then I'll copy and paste later. So next time, uh, explain discrepancy between synthesized and specified FSMs, okay. or in other words, yeah, synthesized and specified FSMs. So we'll look at counters, an example of a practical more and a mealy Actually, we'll just look at an example of a melee FSM because I already looked at more. A practical melee FSM. And we will start models. Okay, so I can show you how to do simulations. And yeah, that's about it. Uh, see you next lecture.